Hi everyone, welcome back to the studio. We're going to start a uh, new challenge. I have a couple running, you know, those of you that painted the roses with me. That was uh, quite an intense challenge, one every day. Uh, and then we're doing the landscape. We started the landscape challenge. We're doing one of those a week, showing you some different landscaping techniques. And I'm also going to start up the wildflower uh, challenge. It's a great time while we're all locked in right now, painting and, uh, you know, do it's uh, fun to uh, paint together and get some of these things done and learn a few things along the way. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the pure acrylics. As a matter of fact, here's my palette out here. Same palette really that I used on the roses. I paint landscapes different, so I use a different palette for that. But this is the Hansa Yellow, my Daryl Light Yellow, um, my uh, Yellow Oxide, Naphthol Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, uh, Thalo Blue, Quinacridone Violet, Red Violet, and Titanium White. And of course, I'm using the uh, the Heritage, um, and I use it just directly right from the tube to squirt that out, and, and off we go. The boards that I'm going to be uh, painting on today, uh, this is the same board that I used in the Rose Challenge. This is an 8x10 double tempered masonite. Uh, so it's tempered on both sides. And the tempering means that they've added, or they've been permeated with oil to give it nice stability and stuff. And I had a great question on one of them. It says, well, can your acrylics go over oil? Yes. Your newer generations, uh, acrylics, can can go over oils. Now, when I started out in this paint industry and I got out of college and I started out as a chemist building paint systems and stuff, we didn't, we couldn't put acrylics at that time back in the 80s over oil. So it's very, very true. You couldn't do that. Uh, you had to put down the intermediate. And because you were worried about every processes we called what's called saponification and cracking and so on and so forth. In the newer generation resins that we use today, and basically starting in around anything that's, uh, you know, less than 20 years old, around 2000, we started making paint systems that can go right over oils without any kind of problem whatsoever. So you don't have anything to worry about. You just make sure, you know, like anything, that it that it's cured. Now the other um, the other surface I use is the MDF. You've seen me use this in many of my videos. I buy this at the local um, wood supplier. I get it in big four by eight sheets and I cut it all down. It's not expensive at all, and it's great for these small paintings. Give it a couple of coats and sand it. I sand everything with 180 grit sandpaper. That just gives a little bit of tooth to to what I do. I like it. I like the feeling of it. And um, you know, off we go. This uh, so this is an eight by ten board. Um, and it's the uh, tempered board. I just painted it and I just gave it a coat of a light gray. I just took a little bit of black and white and a tiny bit of the yellow. And But I left it a little more black and white so it's a little bit more of a gray. I want to paint wildflowers. And, you know, you go out and find all kinds of fun little examples of wildflowers. And they are a heck of a lot of fun to paint. And they teach you a lot of stuff. But especially as what... Uh, um, I call the rocking and rolling of a composition. In other words, learning how to, uh, you know, turn and manipulate your flowers. So we'll talk about that as we get going. But let's grab our three-quarter inch brush. Now, you know, when you paint wildflowers, I will use a variety of, of that. I love the flats. For Sometimes I like to paint daisies and stuff like that with the flats. Um, like these daisies I painted here, those are painted with the flats. Uh, but like the little ones that I'm going to do today, their petals are a lot easier to accomplish with a filbert because it's a natural, uh, you know, outside edge of that petal is a filbert. So I will probably be using my number six filbert today for this painting, okay? Then, of course, I have my um, three-quarter inch flat brush. So these are the fusions. These are by Global Art Diffusion. These are the brushes I like to use. I'm going to take a little bit of water and will probably take, I love that burnt sienna in the backgrounds and stuff, burnt sienna and pine greens, love those two colors together. Let's just put a nice little streak of that running through right up here. This, I love this, you know, the contemporary look. I did, for years I didn't like it. I liked smooth backgrounds and everything perfect. And then, boy, I started studying a, a lot of artists that we call today representational artists and uh they and they are they run a very impressionistic edge and i started really enjoying that since we're going to have a lot of these violet colors underneath let's take some violets and let's just jet in a little bit of violet color i always look so you know uh, 
what happens if you're doing impressionism and stuff and and uh, uh, you know keeping that edge that impressionistic edge to it you look for like these could be flowers that are like further behind the composition or something like that so you jet out some of these colors like this and we might put in a little bit of a a green here maybe a little lighter yellow green you you know it's it's kind of fun to play these backgrounds and try some different things that got too much white in it right there not mixed up not well enough so we'll run a little bit of this in and see that just puts a little different color sometimes i get these backgrounds going on there and i like them so much i don't want to paint anything on top of them you know and sometimes yeah it's time to put a lot on top so they're really kind of fun though to play around with so let's get into some violet some of these little violet colors i'll leave that green there because that's a natural nice toner for the the violet this is a quinacridone violet see if i slide into that green see how that that tones that right down from the bright to the gray and and sometimes you know when you're starting out uh it's nice to start out a little bit toned And then you can, you know, brighten things up, you know, as as you get going. So you can put brighter colors on top. And that's nice about the acrylics is that, you know, you let that tone color kind of dry a bit. And uh, you can paint right on top of it without a problem. So let's tone this down just a bit. And we'll use this to kind of set in an idea here. Little number six filbert for what our smaller little uh, wildflowers might look here and see you can see with that uh with the filbert you get that nice little you get a nice little petal the thing you just touch down and just kind of slide onto the chisel it's not like a comma stroke those of you that are coming from decorative painting it's not quite the same as a comma stroke but uh let's put one up there let's uh put one right around in here and we'll we'll put in quite a few of these little guys here and we're just going to do some of the uh, shapes and stuff of them. We'll we'll push one down like this, do it at an angle. And what we'll do is, see, I make more of an oval shape here as uh, I turn. If you're going to turn one, you're more of an oval. If it's going to be directly at you, you can do it more, um, more of a circle. But as it turns, it goes more to an oval. And let's turn one kind of this way a little bit here pull out and that gives a nice so we got one kind of turning out this way one kind of turning going up going down like here I call it rock and rolling your flowers here so that uh, you get some some variation into your um, your composition let's take a little yellow oxide pinch wipe my brush with my paper towel take some yellow oxide and let's just add a little yellow right to the centers this one will get just a bit might add a little bit more flowers to this depends on because we're going to try to paint it in 30 minutes so it depends on how we we get going here okay let's take around the little flowers there's some darker brighter color around those centers so let's go ahead and strike some of that right now and push that around and i you know the big thing is try and i'm going to add a little red violet to it too so a little quinacridone a little red violet get nice variation of your colors the big thing is try to make each one a little different don't you know don't set up a pattern especially when you're doing little stroke flowers it's very easy to set up a pattern so i have to especially for me coming so many years in decorative painting you know it's easy for me to set up patterns so i try not to i try to make them all look a little bit different sometimes i'll even take some of that dark and just say pull out here like the shadow side and let's just do that let's just pull out a little bit on some of this to make that a little different very loose casual brushwork in there um, that works really well let's put a few marks of some of that color down below here and that'll give us some room for some others and up top there that'll work okay and now what we'll do is we'll come in and 
we'll lighten this up and we're also going to model in some other colors so may you know change the color up so here i put in a little yellow oxide here I put in a little bit of my regular quinacridone brighter color some white and i'm going to model it on the brush so that it's not perfect uh, so that the color will come off a little different as I stroke these little flowers and these little bases of flowers. And then I will push in and out. So I'm going to stroke a few. Now I also have a cap of extender out here. Now I like how extender, I don't use it to blend. It's developed to make you be able to blend. But I love how it uh, causes the colors to slide. And uh, so I use it on small flowers and stuff like that, and roses. You saw me use it on the roses and stuff to uh, cause a sliding of the flower or the the brush and the color here. And so I like how it makes everything just kind of slide. So we'll start some of those colors in there. Here, model this color up a bit, a little bit of that. Let's put a bit of this around like that. Try not to get it too light because, you know, that leaves us some light for later on for highlights and stuff here. But just kind of sometimes pull them out, sometimes pull them in. You get that nice little rounded petal there that's really nice. But I'll, I'll take some of this and I'll push back. And I've lost some of my yellow, which means I get to restate it again. And that's not a biggie, not a big deal. But I'll pull in. Here, maybe pull some out. Gives a nice little movement to them here. And let's pull a few here. Here, out like that. Maybe a little chisel one going across that turns the flower even more when you put a little chisel. Now let's restate our yellows. We'll go through and restate again. And the nice thing about restating colors and yellows like this and the violets is you, I build. I build and build and build my uh, color here. Build and build and build. That's what I like to do here. Let's take a little bit of that Hansa and let's really drop that right in there into the center of that. Tap that around. Let that die down a little bit. Keep it to, if you imagine light coming this way, so I'll keep a light side to it. Tap that around like that. Okay. And we'll push a little bit here, just a little touch of that there. That's good. Let's um, take a little bit of our darks again. Restate some of those darks around there. And you see the second time you build that all in there. I like to touch it with my finger. But the second time you're building this all in here, you're getting a little more contrast as we're uh, stepping this little flower off the background. So even with like the, you know, the prettiness that comes from acrylics is it, that I feel is if you can do it in, uh, you know, some quick little layers like this, it just works so well. Take a little soft... Uh, yellow oxide and just touch through some of that that puts a uh, what we call a half tone of the yellows in there softens that exchange right between the two okay let's uh give our brush a quick little rinse and then we'll pick up i got a little extender there we'll pick up some more light some lighter colors here and uh we'll make some pretty light pretty light little petals pulling in Reload a bit, pull in, let's go a little longer, try to vary them just a bit here. Push in and out a touch. Touch in and out of that center, carry some of those colors through. Make some pretty little flowers and you can, you know, take like the edge, just like the little chisel and pull down and give a better little motion down into the flower there like that. But painting them a couple times like this is just magical, it really works well. Let's break this one up into a couple of petals, pulling in slightly like this. And let's change that color, drop the, t drop the value of it down a bit. Maybe just a, an edge or two here, pulling out this way, like that. That's kind of pretty. See, I like that little bit of yellow I hit. You know, when you, when you do it kind of fast, if I do it slow, they get too perfect. So I need to do them just a bit faster, and then they get prettier, I think. Let's take a little edge of that light, 
So I'll push the brush right here into the edge and pick up that little edge. You know, it's when the rose is what we call the petal edging technique. And we'll just use that little edge right here to draw a couple petals right there. We'll pull some of these in. Maybe a little, remember, change your color. Don't paint too long. Change your color. Let's even put a little yellow in that. Pull out a bit on this side. And let those just get kind of lost up there on that side there. That's kind of pretty. There. And uh, we'll take some of this light. Put a little bit of that light on the edge here. Let's come back this way. And pull a couple in. You can push in and out. That pushing in and out gives you a total different look to your petal. You don't want to do it on every one, but you know, a few of them are just really fun to do. Here. So I'll set those up here. And a few in and out there like that. Just a few. Let that be the kind of lost edge of it. Um, if you want to redefine anything, you can use that edge. Come in here and pull that edge in a little bit more. And put a little more act right there where it's going to be coming into the center there. That's kind of nice. I'm going to rinse that color out. Let's go back with our red violet and some of that quinacridone violet here. And restate some of that dark. See as I restate that again, look at that beautiful, nice, dark contrast that goes right there. into. The, and I want to play against the contrast that I have going up into the the board, you know, up here, putting some of that color back there into the back really helps me because I'm a low contrast painter. I don't normally like a lot of contrast, but it really helps me, you know, paint with more contrast. Let's tap in a little bit of Hansa right up there into the tip of that. Pretty little guys and they get uh, sometimes a little heavier Hansa so they look a little different and I, I'll roll and use now this one maybe I want to tone it down a bit so I'll add a little bit of yellow oxide to it so it's not quite as bright so that these two will control kind of the composition so I might even increase this a little bit more here and I can also go to white tap a bit of that around that kind of loosens up the center a bit if you just let's go back more toned and add just a touch or two back in there. Now, let's, uh, and that, that works pretty good. Let's push this out just a bit further. A little bit of that yellow in the brush. Look what that does. Because it's such a pretty little color when you paint dirty brush like that. Sometimes you can't paint dirty brush, but uh, I love to paint dirty brush. And what happens, happens, comes out. You can never copy it again, you know, which is the sad thing. Because sometimes nice little things happen but you can never re, re, you know, uh, re, reproduce that again so that's kind of a fun little color there and I'll just tap a little bit more here onto that nice light side of that there maybe just a bit more of the dark the light dark is what gives your see that nice dark the light dark contrast is what's going to drive the viewer to come take a look at these guys here. And I won't put it in some of those other ones there. I'll let those just stay nice and soft here, okay? Now, let's go. I'm going to put that filbert away for a second. And I'm going to go grab myself my standard number eight flat. I love painting with the flats, too. I like them both. They, they both do great things. But let's get some of this green out here, a little lighter green. Pine green, a little tone with a little bit of the burnt sand. You can even slide it right over here into your violets. And then you make a green that has a lot of harmony to it because it carries the violet in that as well. And uh, let's just come in and push in. And I'm going to take away some of this uh, bigger look of this uh, the burnt sienna back there with some of the the green. You just come across that like that. And we'll pull some down here like this. Let's take a chisel of some green and some burnt sienna here. Maybe even a little red violet into that green. That makes it super dark. Gives you a nice dark that will work like the idea of stems and stuff like that. And if they get a little big, like that got a little big, just take some green and come over them. 
a bit here. You could use negative painting, which is, you know, painting some of the, the green here out and around like that. Let's take a little bit of the dark. Let's take a dark. Let's put a little contrast, some red, violet, and the green right up in here. And we'll push some contrast right up in here into the center, which will contrast the light petals of the... Uh, little blossoms and see that just builds that up a little bit more right in there so wherever I want to really pull contrast and really drive the viewers eye I can use a little negative painting like this pop out use a little bit of dark a little bit of color out there like that and um, that becomes pretty and I like to uh, let's take some of this light maybe tone it a little bit, the violet, the quinacridone violet and some of the green here and a little bit of white and just strike a few little strikes of that out here as well. See that moves your colors of your composition out a little further. This is very impressionistic. This is uh, uh, the, the type of real looseness that I like, you know, in a painting. Now, let's continue working our greens. We'll take Hansa yellow pine green, a little brighter now, because we've got to get it up to, towards the brightness of that uh, of the uh, little blossoms here. And let's just touch in, and I'll use lighter pressure of the brush so I lay off some more color. Let's just touch in some pretty little light colors here. And so you get this kind of layering of color that's kind of pretty. You know, you, you, it's... Uh, different you know and our job as artists is to always paint and create different so I'll take some just pine green here and use that because you shouldn't just use the same green around I like to vary the greens in the in the flowers and the compositions that I'm painting or trying to create that's what I like to do use some different ones here let's drop that in let's drop a little shadow into that makes it kind of pretty. It'd be nice to have a couple of real light yellow green touches right there into the center here. So we'll just touch a that'll bridge. It, it, it does. I use the leaves a lot to what we call a bridge. You know when you have a flower. If I had dark here your eye would bounce between the two lights. So in color theory we always create what we call the, the leaves as a bridge between two that are jumping. And uh, so I just did that. So we can put in little, little chisel of a vein line. There's something about just a, the idea of a vein line. Even in casual leaves like this, it's just that extra little motion there that, that I like um, <clears throat> in a painting. Now, let's come in a little darker, a little bit of my greens, of my violets, and a little bit of green. And let's just pull a little more dark down through. I like that kind of, let's put a little bit of that dark right down in there. And little movements. Um, you know, this is where you could come in. Let's go, let's put that flat down for a second and go back to our filbert for a second. Because the filbert is great for little touches, little movement touches. So let's take a nice light little yellow green fun little yellow green and just touch it around to uh, make the smaller little touches and the other thing it does is see it makes that little mark that has that rounded edge that is really the rounded edge of the blossom and uh, that uh, really gives a nice uh, what I say consistency to your brush calligraphy to the calligraphy you're using in your painting so you know, ties the leaves and them together. And now I'm just loosening up. I call it my little brush dance. Loosening up the composition here. Dragging some of that down like that. Makes a pretty little composition. Now, the other thing is, you know, I... Some people may be bothered by, you know, the... Um, we say the light, the 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 darkness of something like that that's up there. I don't, I think that's really kind of pretty. You know, you do a little painting like that, that's really kind of pretty. Um, and, you know, I might even 
let's go off here just take a just make this one even a little bit more contrasty Hansa yellow with a tiny bit of light white and let's just tap that right around look at how much contrast that gives these two and that allows me to add just a little Hansa yellow and some yellow oxide a little bit more right up in here and so it's driving more contrast to the overall painting that's up to you you can make a couple petals lighter if you want on them again but if I bother by that at all you know that back what's going on back there you can take any kind of gray and a beautiful gray it comes from just all your stuff you had here on your painting your palette and I do this many times call it the colors of harmony and push it back in and you can use that to soften and push in the colors you can see you can soften back some of the uh, colors that you had you know uh, or that contrast that you had in the background that contrast is nice because it drives you to paint with more contrast but sometimes some people don't like it now um, the other thing that let me just show you this that I do a lot and I did it in a few of the roses I'm gonna do it here is I'll take I love the, the little bit of sky which is my blue and white and you can toss a little bit of this gray into that to soften it down a bit here and I like the pushes of the the sky to come into uh, you know into a painting like this I just think it just adds another little interest or color working to it and stuff and I'll just paint right up to it like that sometimes I'll paint through it I'll, I'll imagine a, a through light you know coming through the painting like that and create that spark of interest you're the artist you create it you can try all different kinds of stuff this also creates those of you that study dust with me that St. Andrew's cross which is a visual cross in the scent that the Dutch used to always use but uh, it works it's all fun we'll put in just a couple more little uh, stem kind of things here maybe a couple of light little greens coming off of them here like that push that around it's pretty little a fun little composition like that of these flowers I could and I could let's just try one more time let's just take a little bit of our violet and our white maybe a touch of our yellows model that up a bit here model means don't mix it means leave it so that some of the colors come off a little different and let's just set a different look to this petal here and if I do that and then pull through, so see, I pull it like this and I'll pull down and pull through. I'll let that trans, it makes that transparent edge that the blue kind of travels through there as well. And uh, that's kind of pretty. A little different. I've, I sit there and paint these little things, trying out all different kinds of stuff. But see, I'm working right around, not on these guys back here, working around a couple of the uh, little blossoms that I've picked out as kind of my center of interest ones so I'm painting them with a bit more contrast and uh, trying a few more little things with them here and see I love that little blue matter of fact that little blue is kind of pretty there isn't it so you know you see something like that and it happens hey you think about maybe just touching a little bit of that blue into your flowers that carries that harmony there of that blue right down into your flowers as well easy to add easy to do I think I'm gonna leave that one just lost down there I might might put up a bit more of a bright and then we'll call this one a bit more of a bright edge right up here onto the front where it's coming back down through and uh, and we'll not do too much more to that one just let that one sit it could have just a touch more since it is on the light side of the composition a little bit more of the light right there but I'm just gonna leave it mostly blurry there just nothing happening to it or the other thing if, if you want to get it get the reverse contrast pull a little more dark out to here onto this side here just pull that out and let that sit down there into shadow like that and uh, that works as well this one could have a bit of that darker bit coming up onto this side too gives you a light to dark into your painting which is kind of pretty 
Just touch those centers. I always like to revisit those center ones. Okay, so there's a fun little, you know, using these guys as a little bit of an idea for painting them, for painting those uh, those flowers, using a small uh, filbert, using a number six filbert. You can uh, paint that also with like a number four, the four on the lines, very nice, I use it a lot. I tend to, almost everything that I do, tend to grab a bigger brush than necessary because, you know, with a smaller brush, you have to really kind of push down and your feeling is always push down or you have to make it with multiple strokes. And that is something that violates what uh, the impressionist John Singer Sargent always said, you know, paint with as large a brush as possible whenever you make those color passages, which is so true. I find that so true. And so I'd rather use a bigger brush and turn it onto its corners, its side, its chisel, as you make different petals and you get more interest that way than using a small brush and pushing down and having to take two or three strokes. You get a lot of repetitive strokes that way and that's what you try to avoid. Okay, all right, so there's some fun little ones. We're going to do some daisies. We're going to do some all kinds of little wildflowers, fun little cosmos and dianthus and stuff like that during this challenge. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Small little little paintings like this. These are also nice small little flowers you can add with your roses in compositions. So if you want to put together some of the roses, some of these flowers in compositions, they make great, they make great paintings. Okay, all righty, I'll see you on the next one.